Hey, welcome to Unstoppable Agents. This is the show where we help people build their business, build their wealth, and build a life of impact and significance. I am super excited today. We get to have a conversation with Robbie Bro. And man, when you think about folks that are just killing it and have a ton to give back, Robbie is at the top of that list. So Robbie, thank you for, uh, thanks for joining us today. I oh, appreciate you having me. Right on. Well, so I'd first just love to start with, uh, tell us about you, where you're at and walk us through your, your real estate journey. So I got licensed in April of 2006. I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana, south, south middle of the boot. The folks that have watched Waterboy, I know people that talk like that. Okay, right on. I've been a, I was a solo agent for six years. I've been licensed for 16 and had a, and I've had a team for 10. We've been, I hit the ground running from jump. My first six months, I sold 35 and I ranged anywhere from 45 to a hundred deals. And right now with a team of seven, we're right at about two, 220 is typically what we average. So 220, right 43, anywhere from 40 to 48 million in production. So. That's awesome. So if you think about, okay, you joined in 2006 and knocked down 35 homes just right out of the gate. Those were not the easiest selling years in the history of real estate. So tell me what you did to get started and get off to a fast start. Man, I was shamelessly asking for referrals from everybody that I could possibly get myself in front of. And if we, if I ran into you at church, if I ran into you at the soccer field, if I ran into you where it was a car lot or old work, I was not afraid to ask somebody to help or shoot. If I ran into people inside the office at the time, I was working at a brokerage of 300, 300 plus agents. If there was something that was 45 minutes out of town on a $85, $100,000 buyer that they didn't want to fool with and they wanted a referral, I was all over it. Young, hungry, couldn't couldn't wait to get started. So there's a song, Young, Dumb and Broke, but I think it's- That's if, right. I was young, that, dumb, I was all three. <laughs> then uh, that solves a lot of problems. Hey, I'm, I'm going to go do that. I love it. So you're asking for referrals everywhere. And what does that, what does that look like? Is that as simple as, Hey, who do you know? Is that uh, I'd, I'd always ask for, look, if you could do me this huge favor, I'm just getting started. I know I'm just getting started, but the beautiful thing from not being super busy is I've got nothing but time to pay attention to your folks. So there's a, there's an easy way to spin, whether you've done a ton of business or you've done none. And I used to get, I actually picked up business off of other busy agents that would let stuff slip through the cracks because it was just straight up follow up. And I was, I refused to take notes. Howard Brenton, rest in peace. One, he used to say, I would go and he'd always talk about looking for one of two fingers, this one or the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, that, I that. rarely ever let up. That's good. That's good. And I think what I love that you said there is so often people are trying to be somebody they're not. So they're new in the business and they're trying to look like they're bigger than they are or trying to look like they're more experienced or more knowledgeable than they are. And what authenticity is what's going to resonate with people because you just get in the business. They're like, hey, you know what? I'm a totally new agent. I'm ready to work my tail off. And great. So people like them are going to resonate with that. And they're going to resonate with the hustle and the desire to do something different. And honestly, you think about a company like eXp, there's, there's plenty of folks that see the jump, whether it's a jump from corporate or to other careers or whatever that, that see you do that. And they're like, Hey, how'd they do that? I want to do that too. So just being who you are can lead to all kinds of business. The cool thing is there's only one you God only made one of us and you if you are unapologetically authentically you're going to attract the people that you want to work with and i would work with a ton of people that i didn't want to work with and i was because i was young dumb and broke <laughs> but eventually right. we started figuring out when some of those things started working their way out it was super easy to identify because i, I refused to give up ever and that's just another thing that's there. I think too many people right now, especially when you're new, you're worried about hurting somebody's feelings of following up. And you know what I think that most people fail to realize is not following up is even worse than being a little bit aggressive. No, that's great. Well, the, the idea about being authentic too is, hey, you know what the reality is lots of people will choose not to work with you, um, but they already do. And that's great. So if somebody else is gonna serve you better, terrific. You should be served by the best person, go get served by them. And then when we choose to work together, then we're gonna have a blast. Or right? you're gonna get a great experience, you're gonna get great follow-up and all of that. So nothing wrong with letting people self-select and uh, just 
and deliver yeah, on what you say. That's great. That's huge. Okay. So, so you, it sounded like you start developing a team relatively quickly. Oh, you know what you said? I think you said five or six years you did on your own, and, and then you started branching out. Absolutely. Actually, I hired my first assistant. I was doing 95 deals by myself, which is including we had our brokerage would input the listings, but I did flyers. I put on lock boxes. I did contracts. I did every I took the pictures like I did everything. Wow. And I didn't sleep very much either. So uh, <laughs> that's what I was it, was, like, it was pretty overrated. crazy. I think the one thing that that helped with that and that's that was really and I should have done that probably four to five years earlier. And looking back to the new agents out there to think about is I was really worried and scared of having somebody depend on me and me not be able to follow through for their livelihood and being able to eat. And that was super important. So what ended up being the tipping point was I saved 10,000, put in a separate account that was set up just for her to make sure that if I ran into some lean months, that it was, that it was, that they were taken care of first and foremost. So if you can, we eliminate objections for buyers and sellers all the time. And we're our, we're our own worst salesperson. We can, we know exactly what to say to get around to everything that we want to, all the BS that we want to give each other. So we have to be proactive on how to get past some of the limiting beliefs that, that are run inside of our own brain to be able to fix that. So had I had done that, find reasons not to do it, writing down the things that I got tired of doing and that weren't dollar productive. And there's Kyle Whistles one that talks about all the time. He said, man, if you're doing $12 an hour work, you are the assistant. So stop doing $12 an hour work and start doing some $500 or $1,000 an hour work. So, you, so at some point you hired an assistant to start doing some of that work. When you started adding other agents to your team, was that to relieve the work from you? Was that to further grow? How did what was your what was your team building strategy? Man, I was a baptism by fire. We didn't have a lot of the stuff that we do today with with the podcast and the YouTube videos. We had some stuff. But teams were barely barely going on, so we were just trying to figure stuff out. I was one of the first ones in, in the state to pick up Tiger Leads. If that is, yeah, that's a long time ago. And that's actually when you can get Google pay per click leads and it wasn't a 2% conversion rate. It was actually like a 20. <laughs> they had, I, you you can follow up aggressively leads. and really make a difference. Really make yeah. a difference. On, yeah. Now, there, if you're getting 1%, you're killing it, or 2% now, you're killing it. But I wasn't able to follow up. I was paying for some of those leads and I wasn't able to keep up. So I, the idea was to split some of these deals with the other agents, be able to help them out and have them help me cover some of the expenses while I ran and still took care of my own sphere of influence. So that's good. And obviously it's been super effective because your business and your team has continued to grow. You joined EXP just, just a little bit. Uh, we were talking ahead of this and a month or six weeks ahead of me. Congratulations. What problem were you trying to solve? So what, what resonated with you that caused you to make a change? The biggest thing for me was how do I sell more houses for cheaper? I'd like to try to be able to, and it wasn't necessarily the company split that we had. I didn't have, I didn't have a cap, which they, we, they had several brokers out there that were there and that was okay because we had 40% market share over there. So it was a, okay. I had to get over the limiting belief again, that people were calling me for the broker, not for the brand that I built over the previous 12 years. But the, the thing that was popping up, so for example, we, we were using Commissions Inc. And at the time for just the platform, it was $1,200 a month to support me and my team. Now it's covered inside, inside the monthly fee that's yep. attached. I also had Skyslope, which was $500 a month. So it's $1,700 a month turned into 85, just like that. Yep. So the remaining $1,615 a month, guess what? I've got brand new ad spend waiting to happen, like just gifted into my lap. You know, and that's, that's without doing anything. And it wasn't necessarily split related because it doesn't necessarily always have to be about the split. You can, for the folks that are super brand loyal, whether there's lots of great companies out there, the Keller Williams, the Remaxes, the Coal Bankers, there's great, there's great office Century 21s, depending on where you are. Some of them are a little bit stronger in some places than others. If we, I would leverage their brand and then as time would get go on, I would make their brand smaller and make mine bigger to where as long as I'm staying in compliance with state regulations, that's super critical right here for those that are listening. As that popped up, I discovered that they weren't calling 
my old broker they were calling me and i had to get past that limiting belief and it was a little bit of a leap of faith but it's it it started checking off some extra boxes so i didn't one of the things that i think a lot of the times that people hear especially coming from other exp agents is they're talking about stuff that is not tangible like stock options or yep. rev share none of that stuff makes any sense to anybody that's not inside that's not inside our business it's not tangible i can't grab a hold of it stock options what does that mean when i start talking to people now and say listen because i'm an icon which means i've sold a certain number of properties plus 20 more i get all the commission dollars that i paid to exp and i get it back in the form of stock, which I receive in three years. So there's an $8,000 that's immediate, $4,000 that's contributing back to the community, which I think everybody needs to send the elevator back down. You get $2,000 to go to a shareholder summit and you get $2,000 to go to a conference right there. So you get it all back. So I actually make more than what I spend. I want people to think about that. I make more money here than if I, than I spend to the company. And that's even if I owned my own house brokerage. Yeah, that's great. And so what I love about that, and you totally get it, and different people are interested for different reasons, but you were interested because it saved you money on the front end, right? So if you could have taken that money and put it in your pocket, now you're a good business guy, so you figured out, I'm not gonna put that money in my pocket, I'm gonna double down and invest it. So those dollars actually accelerated your business. They created net new business. Just when you walked in the door, that's before you, you you look at the stock, you look at being able to purchase the stock at a discount. You look at all of the ways that it's gifted to us. And then, you know, as that's you build a team, man. yeah, then building a team and adding other people and everything else, is, it's a bonus because you're already killing it as a business. You're just paid so many different ways. And it's, it, it's a great math problem. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a, it's, a, uh, it's a great math problem. If there was, uh, if there was one thing that you wanted to share with folks, maybe, maybe if you went back to a new agent, what's the one thing you would gift them with or share with them to help them build their business? New agents getting started. I think there's, I think everybody is too worried about getting big fast or becoming that mega producer immediately. There is a ton of growing pains. Warren Buffett said, nobody is in, nobody gets rich quick. Nobody likes to take the slow way to it. The slow way is what's, it's the grind and the hours that are there. And if you're not serious about that and taking on, making up, making on that lead follow-up and taking on these new clients and asking for the referrals, if you're not talking to people, which is the one thing that you can control. I can't control how many closings happen. I can't control how many appointments are on, but I can certainly control how many times I pick up the phone and make a phone call. So the more I pick up the phone, the more appointments, I, the more contacts I make, the more appointments I set, the more closings I make, the more money I make. Everything relates back to what I, the sweat equity that I put into my own business. So it doesn't come because I wait for the phone to ring ever. And that's still true today. Yeah, there's, uh, there's three kinds of po folks, right? There's the ones that make things happen, the ones that see things happen, and then the ones that wonder what happened. Right? You want to be the you want to be the kind of person that uh, that makes things happen. And I like to think real estate is a contact sport. So it's you got to make a lot of contacts, um, like football or anything else. You get you got to make a lot of contacts if you're going to build a business. So that's great. That's terrific. Robbie, man, I appreciate you joining us today. I'd love to know, are there is there a particular cause or something that's uh, that's near and dear to your heart uh, that you'd like to share with the audience? Man, we try to jump in and help out different charities throughout our local area. We've done Big Brothers, Big Sisters. We've done Faith House around town. We've done a handful of them around town to spread the love a little bit. I think everybody giving back to their local communities where they give a little bit back to what the community that's done a great job to help build you up. I believe in good karma, man. You bring good stuff out, good stuff comes back. It's amazing how that works. The more we talk about God can't give to a closed fist. So you got to have an open hand where you're, you're, when you're giving it away, it's amazing how more ends up in your hand. I love that you're giving back because, because when you do that, it's amazing what opportunity. It's an abundance mindset, right, Brian? Yeah, that's right. If everybody, there's enough business out there for everybody, there's enough love to be able to give out for everybody. And if you do the right, you do the right thing and you're giving with what's, look, even here, I, sometimes I feel like I, I should be on the other end of this screen right here instead of people listening to what I've got to say because I, I consume a lot of stuff. Even people that are two, three, four, five years, if you start giving back to the other folks that are there, it's amazing what happens because you're teaching somebody else now the information that you're able to retain and be able to give back, which ultimately comes back over to you. Totally great. 
totally great. Uh, thanks for that. Thanks for joining today and giving back. Hey, I want to make sure I want to make sure that people know how to reach you and specifically if they have folks moving to your area, what that is and how do they reach you. So tell us again exactly where you're located. We are located in Lafayette, Louisiana. You can find our website, RobbieBro.com. That's B-R-E-A-U-X.com. Facebook, Robbie Bro and team. We're out there all over the place. Phone number 337-267-4099. So great. It's so good to have a name that's recognizable. You could have RobbieBro.com. I can't have BrianWhite.com. It's like super, uh, super boring of Nilla. Good for you having one of those. It's like Smith over here, our last name. So That's exactly right. Hey, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you. And um, thanks. My pleasure.